Hello and welcome to the first episode of The Student Coach. Before we start, I just want to give myself a quick introduction. So my name is Toby Degg. I'm currently a second year student at the University of Central Lancashire studying sports coaching and performance. Currently I'm coaching two cricket teams at my home club and three volleyball teams at the university. For obvious podcasts, I'll speak to a range of different coaches from different sports as well as my fellow students to gain their insights on various theories and methods, which in all will help me to develop as a coach. Without further ado, let's get into the podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Student Coach Podcast. Today I'm joined with Newcastle Staff College Group Sport Lecturer and Volleyball Academy Coach Ross Cope. Ross, how are we, mate? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing, Toby? I'm not too bad, thank you. Um, in today's podcast talking about motivation and sport um but first of all ross how did you get into coaching um good question that's a while ago now let me have a think <laughs> how did i get into coaching i suppose when i was when i was younger and i was participating in sports um predominantly it was football and cricket i'd always like to con sort of leadership roles of, of sort of so like to be in the captain liked uh, telling sort of the bowler where bowl or where the field perhaps should be or um, giving like little hints and tips and stuff. So I've always sort of, I suppose it's been inherently there as, as such. And then while I was at college, um, I was fortunate enough to get a, I started volunteer coaching for the council, um, just like football days here and there and stuff like that. And just loved it. So around the age of 16, 17, I um, was coaching at some voluntary stuff for the local council, different and wide variety of sports, and then also doing um, a little bit with a cricket club, I suppose, with the younger groups, as, as, as they tend to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so today's podcast is going to be all about um, motivation, and um, how we keep players motivated really so Ross you've coached probably the best college volleyball teams for the past 10 years in the country or so <laughs> okay um, it's a tough yeah. how do you motivate your players effectively um, good question I suppose with every every two years, we sort of tend to get like a new, or every new every year, it'll tend to be a new a new crop of students. So, uh, I'm a big advocate advocate of knowing your players, knowing what how they tick, getting them on on a one to one basis, and sort of trying to to motivate them, setting them small targets. I think is is, is one that's really good. So if we used, um, we used to have one player that was very very much the big I am. Um, kind of thing and just get him on a one-to-one -one basis and just sort of set him a new target for that for that game uh, coaching different levels of of, of of volleyball players we'll have some volleyball players that are England standard or England England cadets and, and, and have moved on to, to play pro and then we get some that have started just out um, and giving it a whirl so it's it's, I've never really found, to be honest, motivating the lads too much. Um, or that was quite easy. I'd shout at the lads, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> shout, look, it's not good enough. You need to sort it out. You need to prepare yourself correctly. So a few colourful team talks of the hair dry treatment often worked with, with the lads. With the girls, I very much quickly found out that that, didn't often work in a softer approach for my um, my coaching would need to be where where a, a more one to one basis of, of motivation and a lot of praise a lot of praise would would would, would go down well um, but if I had to encompass it in sort of a condensed uh, yeah how do I motivate my players each to their own so would when you do it more dare, based it? off was it more based off their abilities or more off their, say, um, their character? Character, definitely off their character. Definitely off their character. You could have um, the best, the best player that, that that could be 
Um, and the worst player that, that could be using like technical abilities. However, they, if if you motivate them the same due to their characteristics, you might get the same results if you have the two best players. That I remember one player that always have sort of really good hitters and setters. Um, one, I remember one hitter that we had um, would need his arm around his shoulder and a bit of an ego stroking kind of thing. Whereas another lad wouldn't. He would just, be, mm-hmm. you could tell him anything wasn't good enough and he'd be motivated at that. Whereas if the other lad who, again, was an elite sports person, if you, if you told him that it wasn't good enough, he'd crumble. So definitely on the characteristics of, 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 an, of the individual. So how do you keep a team motivated if there's a big gap in the ability to say you got two England players and then the rest have yeah. just started? How would you keep that team motivated? Um, again, setting, reiterating roles and, and a lot of praise, always try and start with a lot of praise of, of where you're going and then motivating them is give them, give them something new or something different to think about. So it's I, I, setting smaller goals, smaller targets within sets, within points, um, little things. So it might be a case of the inexperienced players. All I want them to do is get in a position and get low and get ready. Um, with the experienced players, it might be a case of like you need to track that that hitter. You need to block that hitter. Mm-hmm. And then once you've blocked that hitter, if it's worked, happy days. And if you haven't, you need to get off and make sure you're ready to hit again. So, um, yeah, definitely. Def- smaller smaller targets, yeah. but again, something that's relevant to them, their ability and their characteristics. Um, so how would you know, how do, without, without literally like asking them, can you tell if a player works better off extrinsic motivation rather than intrinsic? Yeah. You can tell, you can tell, you can tell the ones that you can... Um, not straight away, you can't tell, but you soon get to to, to grips of, of of what they do with medals, or what they do with the praise that or that comes from 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 the coach, uh, me me or, or my assistant coach or, or anything else. Um, you, if if somebody's hitting the ball, spanking it down, and he, and, he, and it's a great point, everybody's cheering. Um, yeah, it makes them. They they feed off that extrinsic sort of aspect, and they're the ones who often have a medal and will stick it down the neck and 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 make sure that everybody sees that they've got the medal. You know what I mean? Um, whereas those intrinsic ones are the quite tend to be the quieter ones yeah. that will, if they make a mistake, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. They know, and they know then how how to make sure that they're motivated. And when they do spank the ball down or they do get a big point, they're quite modest about it, as in that I've done my job kind of thing. So yeah, I, I, that's, I find that's, 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 that's the way I often see the different intrinsic connections and motivation aspects. Is there um, any scenarios, let's say, where you wouldn't motivate your players at all? I wouldn't. Yeah. Very early on. Very early on. If I don't want to, if I want to get a um, certain feel for the group, mm-hmm. so I might just chuck them the ball or to, to get an emergent leader, um, see where they're at with regards to how their application is. Um, the worst thing I've found that in the years of coaching is that if I do go in highly, highly motivated, shouting almost hair dryer treatment from the start almost that sometimes you don't get the best response from the players so yeah. um and vice versa if you, if you if you if you do motivate a little bit some of them might look at you as if well i don't need that so let them play let them go let them enjoy it to see how they go on and then if and if it's needed then then the motivation will kick in um but um i've, I've often found it the the, the the most difficult way to motivate players is during a game where um, they're almost annihilating the other team. Certainly in volleyball, where the ball bats isn't coming over the net, um, the they're, we're serving 
Um, it's not coming back. Um, they serve uh, and it's not getting over as such or it's not challenging enough. That's, mm. that's the most difficult aspect of where I find as, as, as motivating players. Um, but the only time I wouldn't motivate is, is, is very much early on when I see new players start in September when I get a new intake and just see where they're at and see what their motivation levels are like. Does it need my intervention or not, really? So, so let's say you're in the middle of a training session and you can tell that your players are a bit down, they aren't they aren't really in with the task you're doing. Yeah. Would you do you stop the task or do you start Change. a new one or within the same task complete like start a new challenge? Dep well, yeah, it depends on what 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 it's what's causing the lack of motivation. Is it a case of we'll do early morning sessions? Uh, and you can imagine teenagers, 16 to 19, and then around that age, uh, motivation in the morning is, is, is minimal at best. Um, but they've done the hard thing and, and they're naturally turning up. So um, it depends on what they ask. The, in the middle of a training game or a training session or a training drill, if the motivation does plummet, reflect on what, why. Why is it? Is it a case of they aren't applying themselves correctly and it's going wrong? Is the drill too simple for them? Then it needs changing. Um, is the drill too difficult for them? The reason the motivation's gone, does it need changing? Or is the drill practice been going on too long? But again, it needs changing. So quite fluid with, with that. There's no real one sort of answer with that. So it, it all depends on why that motivation is, 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 is quite low in the first place. So how would you approach someone who, let's say, no longer wants to play volleyball? They just want to stop playing completely, but you know they've got talent, they can do well. But would you motivate them to continue with it or would you just let them do them? Um. Depends on how many players I've got. <laughs> depends, depends on how many players I've got, how good they are and what difference I think it might make. Some people are lost causes. Some people, if they don't want to play, they don't want to play. And you know what? I the, the, the biggest thing for me to play sport is, 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 is a happiness thing and making sure that you, why would you, why, why do you do anything unless it's going to make you happy kind of thing. And sport's the biggest advocate for that. We're not going to get paid a lot the people that I, that I sort of train and motivate, they're not sort of going to get ever, mostly, most of them are ever going to get paid or create a longevity career of it. So you got to enjoy it. Um, if they aren't enjoying it, again, go back to why they aren't enjoying it. But if they say they don't want to play, try and find out the reason. If it's a case that they aren't enjoying it, is it a case that the, the play is the word? Um, the... And talk, speak to yeah, them why, why they aren't enjoying it in this if, if we yeah, can help them out if they, if they are a lost cause then by all means and first and foremost the most important thing is, is their mental their mental state and trying to force somebody to do something that they don't want to do is to fight a losing battle do you know what I mean because even yeah. if you do get them on court or you do get them in training sessions they're going to be they're going to have a negative effect on everybody else yeah um Dragging people in to make up the numbers. Yeah, you just have to, again, if you know they're going to be good and you know they're going to be excellent, just try and give them that, that realisation of how good they are and, and what they could make of themselves or what they could do or where they could mm -hmm. go with it. Um, if they are... If they... It might be a case that they, they, they're saying it because they're just going through a tough time at the moment, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And, and the fact of actually getting on court or getting on playing would make them happy. Yeah. Um, it might be a case that they, they, they're saying, oh, I don't want to play volleyball anymore because I'm not feeling it. Yeah. Get to the reason, Get try and get to the reason why and be open and frank and honest with them and just mm -hmm. go, Look, you get on court, you, you can forget about anything, any problems that you've got in life. You can forget about whatever it is going on because when you're on, when you're on court, all that matters is, is, is having fun and, and enjoying yeah. it and, and playing that ball. 
that's all you need to concentrate on, playing that ball yeah. and where your teammates are, what's going on. You can forget about whether you've gambled away the, the months, the months <laughs> salary and you're going to work out on a, <laughs> do you know what I mean? A, yeah. A, Yeah, you're going to miss a mortgage payment or you've got an assignment that's due in late or whatever. Whatever it might be, as soon as you get on court and mm -hmm. you're playing, that, that's, you're in that element. It's, nothing, can, nothing can really touch you then. So try and reiterate that. But motivating somebody that is brilliant at a sport but doesn't want to play it, ultimately you just have to say, yeah. Sports missing out on, on, on a great player. We did have one player who, uh, years and years ago, who I think at their peak of when they first left high school was the best passer, Libro stats person in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. Never fulfilled his potential for um, his ability within the sport, um, but I think he liked being a big smish and a big fish in a small pond. Mm -hmm. So he, he was he, he, he is what he, he he was what he, he is what he was kind of thing so it was a case of it was good enough for us because we had three years of absolute brilliant playing <laughs> and he, and he, it was great for us mm -hmm. but in in the fact of the grand schemes of things volleyball's missed out on a mm -hmm. potentially a, a pro player he's missed out on those experiences that's life, that's life. So. so my final question for you ross is um, yep. if you've got a player who's not motivated, but because he's being benched week in, week out, he's not getting much court time. Mm. How do you motivate him to say, keep coming to training and keep working hard? Just the arm around the shoulder, arm around the shoulder, keep coming training, keep doing what you're doing. You'll get a chance. Um, it's, I often, I often try and get, Yesterday, for example, we had 11 players mm -hmm. um, and we've got six, seven, I don't know, I reckon, seven regulars, eight regulars that are mustered, do you know what I mean? Brilliant. Yeah. Um, motivation is not really that much of, a, of an issue. And then you got players who, who come that are fringe players that, you know, that they aren't quite there skill-wise, but they've, they've travelled down on the bus, they want to do it, they've got there. And you know what, just stick them on somewhere on a point and try and get them a little bit more mm -hmm. time. So I'm a big advocate for, Luke, unless you're getting paid in sport, then try and get everybody a game yeah. somewhere or, or other. Try and get them some court time, try and get them a bit of a touch on the ball. Um, if if you, as soon as you, people start getting paid to play, that whole life, that for me as a coach, that whole like, ethos would change. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, a, it's a job that I'm going to put out my best side yeah. and, I, and, I, and I can easily do that because we're paying you. Mm -hmm. um, some coaches are win at all costs and we're not the best team on and if and if I can't get people on I'm, I'm not bothered. I'm, I'm a little bit I suppose a little bit soft in that area so I, I've never really had it, that issue yeah. I've never come across that issue where they're not getting game time for me as a coach or if they have I've, they've never voiced that opinion to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I've never really had to worry too much about that. Um, if, if, I, if, that, if that ever is the case, I might just have to reiterate the fact that the, it will come, the time will come, I will give you some game time. Um, push, push, push and, and, and go and, and, and push for that position. Um, if somebody's good enough to do it, I think they'll... You, they should get game time. Um, if the person in front of them doesn't, this is, yeah, I suppose this one's a good one for motivation. So if you've got, let's say, I'll flip this one for you, Toby. If you've got two players, one player who's playing in that position all the time, they might be the setter. You're the, you, you're a great setter, so you're the, you're the setter. You're, you're the only setter within the team, in the squad. You almost, your motivation could be well, I'm only the only setter, so it's okay. I can just play. I can go. I can do it. I'll go for the motions. I'll do what I can. You never did that. You were mustered. Your motivation was good. But you could almost get that in that intrinsic aspect of, I'm okay, because there's nobody pushing for me place. If that person's on the bench and they're asking and they're going and they are, they are 
um, wanting to get into that position. This other player, this this top player who, 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 who is thinking they're untouchable because this player isn't as good, make a change. Make that change and, and don't be afraid to do it because it'll one, it'll motivate that person and go, actually, yeah, I can't I can't sit on my laurels. I do need to make sure I, I get sorted. And it'll give that person that that motivation yeah. as well of yeah, actually, he does see a little bit in me. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. um give them an opportunity. Yeah. If they fail, they fail. You mm-hmm. have to hold your hands up as a coach and go, yeah, that was my position. And then you switch it back again, <laughs> put the other <laughs> person back on. But you've given that opportunity and then yeah. say, look, I will give you it. And then they know that as long as you talk to them, you're open and you're honest, then yeah, I think mm-hmm. that, that would be my advice if, if if there was somebody, a young coach, unsure about that kind of thing. Or that's mm-hmm. what I do in that situation if I ever get to that. Touch wood, I've never, I've never had it yet. Um, I don't Perfect. Well, big thank you to Ross for joining me today. Um, And I'll see you all in the next episode. Cheers, Toby. Thanks. Take care, mate.